I was going to post another video today, this morning, Sunday morning, uh, but I wanted to do a follow-up video on the squeak on this machine. Um, and this is what it was, and I, I found it by help of uh, one guy in the comments. I believe his name was Bill. Uh, this machine, I greased the crap out of this machine. You see all the grease all over it. One dude said, uh, man, grease those three fittings right there. I grease them every time, those those right there I do. Uh, you can even see all the way. There's grease everywhere on it. That's one thing about my stuff. You ain't got to worry about it. I take care of it. I'm very meticulous on, on my stuff, even the gravel, grease everywhere coming out. So here's what it was. I had one guy in the comments. Like I said, I think his name was Bill. He said, I had the same thing happen on his. He said it drove him absolutely nuts trying to figure out where the sound was coming from. I had another guy that I know text me this morning and said, for God's sakes, when you figure it out, he said, please let me know. He said, it sounds like it's coming from that right rear corner up there in that canopy. And I said, yep, that's what it sounds like it is, but it's not. What this thing does, and this is a poor design on Kubota's part, and I'm going to call Kubota out on this because they really need to do something different. It's coming from right here. It's where it's coming from. Let's dig into this a little bit, y'all. So this is the side shift. This is what allows the boom to pivot all the way around to the right and then pivot back toward me where I'm sitting. There's your grease fitting right there on the top pin. And that's a big pin right there too. And then you've got a grease fitting in there on the bottom section. Well, I rarely use the side shift. It gets greased every time. But there again, remember, that's a big pin. So when you, if you don't rotate this thing like I don't hardly ever, and you grease here, the grease is never getting around to the back of the pin all the way around on the top and the bottom there. So the guy said, he said, just take it. He said, rotate it all the way around, grease it, bring it back this way as far as you can, because you can't come all the way back all the way around and still get, gre still get the grease fitting on there to grease it. He said, do that. He said, it'll stop it. And that's what I did. I rotated all the way around to the right because the grease fitting's pointed this way. I greased it till it till I seen it pump out on top and bottom. Then I brought it back around this way as far as I could get away with. Greased it till I seen grease come out, and that's quite that stopped it right there. And uh, what Kubota needs to do is they need to either put, which they probably couldn't do it on the pin to actually grease the pin, but they need another grease point on the back of this thing. This pin actually needs the size that it is, two, they could actually put one right here. You could put one, that would probably be the best scenario, put one right here, and then on the other side, one there. And same on the bottom, rather than putting it in there on the 90 right there. That way you would get this half and you would get that half. So Kubota, y'all need to take notes on that and, and adjust that to where that would work. Because it, it started there Friday afternoon, Oh yeah, you could e they could easily drill and tap. That'd make a lot more sense. And it wouldn't be in the way of anything. You could still get right there and grease that too and do it. Cause see, you got uh this right here greases the one of them greases the end of the cylinder right there, and the other one greases the swing bearing and then the and then the gear right there. And uh, that's what those three do. But I wanted to go back and, and revisit that to where um, you could see that. And other people would know what that is. So I called Logan a while ago and explained, because he's, he's got a Kubota that's brand new. He just put 100 hours on it. He said his is doing the same thing. He said, man. So I called and told him what it was, and he was fixing to go uh, look at his. So something else I did with the 500 here, I just, I pulled the starter cover off of it to uh, look at it. And I've actually knocked some of the stuff out of it here. 
But uh, there's a uh, a lot of people say a lot of different things about the you know the huskies and the and the steels. Both great saws, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take the bar off this thing. Somebody asked what uh, what I use to clean the rail out. That's it right there. You can get it off Amazon. I think they're about five bucks. I got uh, there's a link in my Amazon description that shows it there. Uh, somebody said that they use old hacksaw blades. You can use anything to fit in the groove there to drag it out. A hacksaw blade would work great taking, cut a hacksaw blade off and take a grinder and grind it where you had a little, little hook on it right there. And it'll just snatch that stuff right out of it. I got a lot of videos out that shows uh, saw maintenance and bars and stuff. Make sure when you pull that bar off that you clean the oil journals in the bar. That's the most important thing. Clean that rail out and then clean those uh, journals out. Because you can see it's got so much stuff in there. The dang chain don't even want to sit down in there. But I put some hours on this saw uh, the other day. Again, Steel and Husqvarna are both great saws. Um... There's just some things about the steel that I really, I don't understand. Um, Hus Varner, they don't put it on their saws anymore. It, it used to be called back in the day, they called it air injection. They don't, they don't even note that anymore, but that's what it is. They've got the flywheel on it fixed to where it basically pre-cleans everything before it ever gets to the uh, air filter. And it takes just about everything out of it. And uh, this is the pile that came out of that 500 right there. I could literally run a 572 for two weeks and it wouldn't even have that much in it, maybe a quarter size in it. Some people say that fines don't bother a saw. <laughs> uh, even if they don't bother the saw, I would prefer for them not to go through my saw, especially on a saw that I paid $1,400 plus tax on. You know what I mean? And that's just my thoughts on it. This was, uh, all pine cutting uh, yesterday or the um, not yesterday Friday. Let's see, let's see what it uh, what it looks like. Although, okay, so there, there's one other thing too. I want y'all to help me on here. I'm gonna put this thing back together here in just a second. It has to do with my truck, my 5,500 out here. So I want to put, I want flashing lights on it, you know, like safety lights. And I've seen the things advertised where you can just plug them into the truck and it actually turns your existing lights into safety lights without having to. The biggest thing about that is you won't have to run wires all over the truck and then install the lights. I mean, if I have to do that, I will get it done, you know, if it's better, but they, they make the things where you can just plug into them that will automatically do that for you. But I don't know anything about them. If, if any of y'all have some experience with them, and I'm, don't, I'm not talking about, you know, that you know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody else that knows a brother that knows an aunt and an uncle it's like 45 people down that's got that. <laughs> and I'm not being mean or ugly, but I don't want to go off on a wild goose chase. And I, and I can tell in the comments, you know, the legit stuff and not. But uh, tell me what I need to do on that, uh, what I need to get, if, I, if that'll work, or if um, just go ahead and get the truck fixed up like what I'm talking about, where it's got the safety lights 
all the way around it. And I don't mind spending the money on it. And if you do say that the plug-in thing won't work and, you know, you're a Birmingham, you know, Mississippi, you know, something like that, that, that you can recommend somebody good that does that stuff that can wire it up because I don't, I don't want no uh, shoddy job on it. I want it to be, you know, you know, top notch and everything. And then uh, also, I want to put lights like the little the LED strip type lights. I know they make them. I just don't know where to go to get them or whatever. But I want to put lights in every one of the boxes on that uh, CM bed because a lot of stuff I do I do in the evenings and they end up in the dark and stuff like that. And I want to be when when I open the box and hit one switch in the truck on my auxiliary and cut all the lights on inside the inside the boxes to see. So. Uh, that's the cool thing about YouTube. Uh, really, really good people out there that are helpful. Uh, it's just like Bill on the on the mini, because I'll crank this thing up and show you that it it solved it. Doing that, let's get it in. See, I couldn't do that yesterday. And that is the only thing that I did was I greased that right there, that. I rotated it. I rotated all the way this way. Greased it and then uh, I brought it back this way as far as I could, which is about right in there. It'll come on around further, but that's about as far as I could go with it and still get the grease on it. So like I said, that's a big benefit of YouTube is everybody can help one another. And when you run into stuff like this, and that's the reason why I asked the question, you know, to y'all, because it's it's very, very helpful and everybody can, can learn from it. You know, you may buy a mini one day down the road and you'll know that now if you watch this video and, and also, uh, yep. So that's the deal. So I appreciate all y'all. Appreciate the help in the comments and and things like that. There were several good uh, suggestions that uh, that that came out of that video uh, yesterday. And like I said, that's uh, what it's all about. This is not the video I wanted to put up today. I was gonna put up one. I took down a tree, me and Justin did Thursday evening. It was a bad, bad tree right up against a camp house over there and uh, above Tuscaloosa. And that was a video I wanted to do today, but I felt like it was more important to get this video up for where you could kind of see what I came up with uh, on that. Cause I wasn't real sure exactly what I was dealing with right here. And, and some of the stuff like that right there can be I mean, it could have been some of the mount bolts here on anything of this cab area right here broke. One of them broke and is rubbing a little bit or something like that. That's what I was going to go to first was that. Because I had already checked the swing bearing and everything in there on the bottom of it. It had grease coming out from around it too. You know, because I thought, well, maybe one of the grease hoses over there on the side that greases the swing bearing man i'd have been connected up or something you know and and it was dry but that wasn't that wasn't the case so simple fix right there you know just a little bit of time but trying to figure this stuff out you can spend an incredible amount of time to uh try to try to figure things out and and just you know breaking your neck you know scratching your head kind of deal and uh but but YouTube's got us, uh, got us good points. There's more good points about YouTube than bad points. You know, sure you got your, your folks there in the comments and stuff like that that you deal with from, from day to day. But there's more good to it than it is bad because you can learn so much by just clicking a button uh, on that. Um, so, uh, we'll roll on, uh, this week. Hope y'all all have a, uh, <laughs> great week this week. And let me get this video up real quick where y'all can watch it. Appreciate all y'all. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.